We're in Sydney, there's plenty of hustle and bustle. Why? Because we're with the all new MG Cybester, the first in-person look at the MG we've all been waiting for. Welcome to the garage. Subscribe to see the first drives of New Zealand's newest and best cars driven on New Zealand roads in New Zealand conditions. <laughs> You know, for many people, this is what MG is all about, the sports car. But you know what, even in the days of the, the TDs and TCs, and not just talking about MGBs, there are sort of old school cars. The Cybester, well, it's completely new school. MG wowed Goodwood this year, celebrating their centenary. And the Cybester was at the center of the party, including the new hardtop version and you can see why they made a fuss. You know, the sort of first rule of a British sports car, it has to be good looking. Give that one a tick. The race has been on for car makers, all vying to be the first to get an electric roadster to market. And MG have won the race, and they've been celebrating this around the world with an MG marathon from England to Monaco, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia. We're in Australia um, to look and touch, but we can't taste, not quite yet, not the drive, but we can take this car in. And one thing I will say is, this is no retro pastiche. This is a very new car. That MG Octagon is about the only, well, traditional MG feature of this. There's a bit of F-type to the front of that, which is really nice. The side profile is classic sports car in proportion, the big long bonnet, even if there's no engine under there. Now it's a bit tight here, so you're not rounding with me, but it's quite bluff. There's a touch of a vibe to it. I really dig it. You know, I'm not sold on though, are those indicators. I don't see the point of the arrows, if you like. I know someone said that, well, they're reminiscent of part of the Union Jack, reminded that this comes from the, the London Design Studio. Not sold. It's a genuine performance car, chassis-wise. There's double wishbones up front, a multi-link rear and Brembo front brakes. Well, now to the party piece. I hope I can make this work correctly. And that's the doors. Ah, there we go. How's that? Now, I have checked. You can set how far they open up. So if you've got a low roof, don't worry. What a party trick. Those doors are a fitting portal to what is a high-tech expo. It is quite the party trick. You know, you're sitting in here, and I'm looking at the shape of this car. Show my age here. But this, this reminds me of Luke Skywalker's Land Speeder. But you know what, I think this is faster. The dual motor is the car we're getting in New Zealand, and it's quick. Zero to 100, 3.2 seconds. Match that one, Luke. Hold on. Yeah, this dual motor version pumps out 375 kilowatts, 725 newtons, and that makes this the most powerful MG ever. Under the floor, there's a 77 kilowatt hour battery giving a range of 440 kilometers. Is fast charging of 10 to 80 percent in as low as 39 minutes. Now, a little disclaimer here I own an old British sports car and, and I love the romance of it, but the truth is they can be hard work. They're, they're not very waterproof, they're not always very comfortable, but you call that the charm. But when it comes to this, it's like comparing a log fire to underfloor heating. Now, if I can make this roof go up, you'll see that it's fast. 14 seconds, and even better, you can put it up at up to 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah, there's not a gauge in sight like the exterior. There's no effort to retro theme this car. I mean, look at this screen. It's glorious, 10 inches, seven inches either side. That's 24. You know when the MGB was released, you couldn't actually get a TV with a screen that big, and it was in black and white. And like with the exterior, there is nothing that's reminiscent of, of the old MGs. It's a very new, new car. It's also exquisite, the build quality. I know MG had both surround sound as well, and these seats are awesome. There is zero misery to this, which is sort of very anti-British sports car. And it's not just quick. As I mentioned earlier, MG have beaten Porsche, Tesla, and Polestar to market with their electric roadster. Now on the steering wheel, uh, there are paddles. One does the uh, regenerative braking, the other chooses the drive mode, but I do love this one, the super sport button. Very Ferrari-like, these buttons on the dash, but this, this one releases all the hounds, gives you that 3.2 seconds to 100. 
NMG is set to beat the competition on price as well. The indication is from around $110,000 in New Zealand. That's for the all-wheel drive. And a bit of a tip from MG, they said if the demand's there, we could get the rear-wheel drive version, which you'd have to expect would be sub $100,000. You know, that's what this is. This isn't just an MG sports car. It's, yes, I know traditionally it's a successor to the MGB, the, the, the TFs and the like, but you know what, it's more than that. It's, it's actually a GT car. It's too luxurious, too complete to be a sports car. And you know what, not just because of the electrics either, I think MG have missed a trick with this, with the name that is. Not Cybester. For me, this is the MG E GT.